Hello, and welcome to the House of Gods, an LGBTQIA2 plus podcast. My name is Jackson. I'm one of your hosts. I use they, him pronouns. And, you know, I just quit the podcast, you know, <laughs> had a whole, <laughs> had to grab my box and walk out of the office. And... You're what? What? You're, you're what? My box. Box. <laughs> So, this is a new information. Simone will never be allowed to hang out with any of my kids because they will say something and Simone will try to find a way to make it sexual. So, Simone no, will never meet my kids. No, it's already sexual, ever. but whatever. No, it's not. It's, it's a box. Not. It's a box. Search it on Urban Dictionary. That doesn't I will matter. Not. Urban Dictionary doesn't mean shit. No, it doesn't. It's like it's a, a very box. commonly is- known slang term for coochie. Yeah, but obviously that's not what I was talking about. Obviously it's, it's not so very was. known. It's fairly well known. Moving on. Well, it is. That's obviously not what I was talking about. So you're Resident still banned from meeting senior. my children. My name is Abraham. I use she her pronouns. It's been a fucking week, my guy. Yeah. Actually, it's, oh my it, I guess it has been a week since, you know, they last heard from us. <laughs> Oh, no. I don't even mean that. I just mean, like, it's been, like, we're three days into the week right now recording. And so far, my body has been attacking me for every single one. hate that. Well, this, yeah. you know, kind of deserved. It's, uh, oh, my God. I will bro. stab you. I will cut your dick off and shove it down your throat. I Kill. honestly... That's kind of kinky, actually. Kill. I will gouge your eyes out and put them in a blender. I will make you drink. I think that kind of reminds me of a song by the Insane Clown Posse called Catch a Predator. Anyway, hi, I'm Simone. I'm your third host. I use she, they pronouns, and I have a pink gamer set up right now. Smile. Love it. Material girl. Material girl. I think I think the moment that we know that Simone it has reached rock bottom is the day that they no longer like pink. Dude, I would shit. Yeah, no, you'd be like, that would be like, this is like a few days before you die. Like, this is, yeah, this is rock bottom. You have hit the ground. There is no lower you can go. Yeah, that is. Eulogies. Like, it's like when I die, which will be in about 10 to 5 years. Uh, Bro. (laughs) What? Bro, you have to live to, you have to live to see the 22nd century. Simone will come, will, will what? What? Simone. <laughs> <laughs> Simone will arrive to my funeral and be the only one not in black because they will be wearing all pink. Like she will be decked out. Yeah, what about it? And it will be like I will like if Simone did arrive at my funeral not in pink, like they they would be kicked out. Exactly. She wouldn't be allowed in. It's like a rule. And then I would set a challenge for Avery to not cry. Every time, every time Avery cried, she would have to put um, like ten bucks into a child fund. We should turn it into a drinking game. Every time Avery cries, take a shot. The entire funeral procession would also be dead. I would also make it so Avery had to speak during it, just to get people more drunk. Beautiful, beautiful game. Okay, this is um, how I think my funeral would go. No. <laughs> Let me just show you the row. layout. No. Bro? Um, anyway, if you want to find us on the internet where we do foul shit, um, you can find us on Instagram at House of Cards underscore podcast, on Twitter at LGBT underscore deck, on TikTok as House of Cards LGBT and what is our merch website Avery? Do you want to do a YouTube it's as well? It's written there. It is. Oh, <laughs> our YouTube. It, I wrote is it down. Ha- House of Cards LGBT deck, and our website for merch is https colon backslash backslash by by House of Cards company dot site slash. Smile. <laughs> Five stars. Ten out of ten. Thank you. Would recommend. I think a really fun game would be like having to list all of our social medias, but like a race. I would lose. 
Oh, Simone would totally lose. I would lose. <laughs> Even, like, like you, everyone would be allowed to have it in front of them written down, but it's whoever could read it the fastest. And most I could not. And, yeah, but, yeah no. it would have to be, you'd have to understand what they were saying. Yeah, that's not a good thing for me. I feel like I'd have a decent shot, because I've got Newfie blood. Newfie blood. I heard I, some, I, bro, I served from, I served. Have you ever heard a Newfie go off? Yes, I've served. Yeah, I, no. I've served a Newfie at my job, and I swear to God. Oh, we might have viewers in Newfoundland. <laughs> we probably do. My nan and pop. Like, it's not my nan and pop. Oh, oh no, shit, no, no, no! Docs, my grandparents. How you said the? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, nan and pop! Oh my God, they found out the name of nan and pop. Nan and pop. Is that the legal name? No, but like anyone who knows me would know. Anyways, if we have anyway, <laughs> oh I meant like other than them. I meant Avery, like other I've, than them. Avery, I've doxxed my nan and pop to my family. They now know. <laughs> Holy <laughs> Guys, shit. we've established I'm smart but stupid. Yeah. I forgot Holy to shit. their real names. Do you even Holy remember? Shit, what are their real them. names? No, don't say it. Don't, don't, I know don't them. say them. I know them. Do you? Do you want to know my real name? Them. It's Balls. That checks out. Technically, if you wanted to know Simone's real name, you just have to go back in the podcast. What? What? I didn't... No, I changed my name before we started doing the podcast. Yeah, but I think we've mentioned it at least once. Yeah, because I called you it a few times at the beginning. Oh, yeah. Yeah. True. Because, you know, Avery's transphobic. Oh Absolutely. <laughs> Avery transphobic arc. Avery transphobic it comes arc? With the cr- it comes with the chronic pain. JK. Damn. <laughs> Sorry, that was so, dark. Go off this. Dude. We're getting we're getting really close to Pride Month. Yeah, yeah, we, we are. are. Technically, we're in Pride Month. As of when this episode... Actually, no. We're right before Pride Month, I think, is when this episode is released. Give me one second. Yeah, so happy yep. Pride Month. So Pride Month will be, like, our next episode, which will be Simone's special episode, will be the first day of Pride Month. So most episodes oh. is the fourth day of Pride Month. That is who we are giving. I fucking love that. Let me let me just change Simone, you're actually gonna be Smile. No. Uh Smile. and we're actually going uh wait. And then uh I have a plan. So for the next few episodes, um Avery doesn't have to write a script. I don't. And I think this if Avery's true. okay with it. We mm-hmm. might, cause we might do our last, um, our last episode of June. We maybe we'll play like a game, like maybe, cause we want we want to get just introduced to the Gay Olympics before like mm-hmm. the, yeah, the, so the anniversary, so just knows what's happening. So maybe so like true. Avery gets one extra day, <laughs> which doesn't have to write the script, and all we do that episode is the Gay Olympics. Would that be the thirty first? No, what? June doesn't have a 31st. Oh, fuck. No, it would be... No, I'm talking about the last day we post the episode. It would be the 14th. Remember, whenever we have an episode recorded, you have to go two days down to see when it's recorded. To when it's posted, I mean. So, when we record... We will record it the 14th, and it will be posted the 29th. Yeah, yeah. I feel like Avery doesn't truly understand how this podcast functions. (laughs) No, I, like, I do. I just, like I said, bro, I've been going through it. It was a long day, too. I, but, I oh know. my god, I'm getting a guinea pig. We will, talk a, we will talk about the mas- ma- mascot in a minute, but technically, <gasps> for, the, for the entire month of June, uh, including one week in May, uh, we're doing special episodes. Yum. So, to ce- this is kind of like a celebrating Pride Month. Um, I'm gonna send you guys what I'm gonna be using to study for the game Gay Olympics. By the way, we don't okay. even know I what. See it. <laughs> I'm going. Be. I'm going to. I'm gonna go through that, and I'm going to like not use any of. It. I'm like, okay, Bro. we can't do that. We can't do that. We can't. That'd be cheating. It's I'll, 100%. I'll... It's on the spot. No, it's you can study for it. Yeah, there's no rules against studying, bro. We yeah, I'm gonna text Jess to study too. Y- y'all are free to study it. Yeah, like um, 
We just don't know what it is. Avery's gonna make flashcards and win. <laughs> but I, I think we'll do a spe- and then we'll have a special announcement on the Gay Olympics. As well as Yo. like I'll figure out an award, but there'll be a special announcement. Is that for <laughs> the June or for the September? For the June. June. For, for the, the June. June. The June. Yeah. yeah. The June big. Um okay. So yeah. So just kind of enough keeping the schedule. Um as of today, we began our story. Actually, as of last week, we began our storytelling series. With this bones. Is what, this with bones. Go check that out. Go check out uh, Adx Bones. A D D A X B O N E S. Anywhere. Apparently, an addict is an animal. I didn't yes, know yes, it is. It's a type of thingy. It's a type of. It's a type of. It's a type of board. It's a type of board. Um. What? I thought it was like not, a type of deer. That cannot be true because when I saw it, I thought it was a goat. Guys, I was trying to have everyone believe it was a board. Why are you oh. gaslighting our <laughs> listeners? Um, and then, so today is kind of when the series begins. We're more solo. Uh, that'll continue through June uh, up until the 15th. And then on the 22nd, we have a surprise, which we won't tell you until a bit later. And then the 29th, we will end June with the Gay Olympics with a surprise announcement at the end. So, June. What? Do we already know the surprise announcement? Technically, okay. I'll, I'll like remind you and like yeah. Um, okay. But uh, as of June, yeah, I'll I'll give this special announcement. And also, we're all graduate. All of uh, also, this is really big news. Is Jess, me, and Simone are all graduating in June during Pride Month. Yeah. Well, I not. might graduate. High school. I might graduate. You'll probably graduate. Um, but yeah, that's the agenda. Uh, now let's talk about our mascot quick. We have a mascot? Um, apparently. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I, I'm i getting a guinea pig. Oh my god. Wait, not a fancy mouse? No. No, <laughs> I decided to get a guinea pig instead because, you know, like they're a bit bigger. I can like cuddle him and stuff. Oh, oh my god, yeah. oh my god. his he name is. naked anyway. It's not. I'm adopting him from Arcs, uh, which oh. is like a rescue um, adoption foundation. Super great. It's actually um, where my parents got our dog. Uh, but yeah, I'm getting my guinea pig from Arcs, and his name is Beans. And he's a chonky little boy, and he's my son. I can't wait. Amazing. It's gonna be That's... beautiful. Yeah. He will be. He will be. So yeah, we got a lot of stuff coming for June. Like June is technically start not technically, sorry. Episodically starting next week. You know, it's Pride Month coming up. I can't even re- my brain hasn't even processed it's almost Pride Month. Oh, Which, I keep having to say June, I think of Avery's D D character. When I think of, <laughs> when I think of June, I think of I'm graduating. Like that's my main thing about June. Shut up. Um, I we have uh, another big note to notice is you will most likely not have. Uh, the, it'll most likely be that Justin Simone will also be missing for a bit of episodes in June and July. Um, yep. Because of exam season. Mhm. Yeah. Gross. What? And Jackson won't. I am doing English diplomas. Oh, yeah. Lucky bitch. Your, your school has that weird thing. Yeah, what? I'm doing math what? and social studies. No, you can't study for English diplomas, Avery. How do you study yeah, for know, an English diploma? Yeah, I'm pro. I know. No, I'm but you're doing major. quarter. Yeah, you're doing your quarter. That's weird. why it's weird. What? It's the the quarter system. Because oh, I only have two exams instead of like four or three. I'm an English major, motherfucker. Yeah. So June will be a bit of an iffy month for studying. Um, Simone will most likely miss two episodes. Oh, well, I might miss three for emotional support. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> I also have exams actually at that time. Really? I thought your exams were in May. No. No, because spring, spring, spring thing. Yeah, but one of them is multiple choice, and one of them is half multiple choice and an essay, so 
Oh. Bitch, I'm, I'm but, good. Anyway, with June, we have a lot of fun stuff coming. Technically, all of the episodes being released in June are really fun. It just sucks that in June we have to record normal episodes. Yeah. Except for two. Except for I, two. I mean, don't. Oh. I, I don't oh think it's boring. Oh my God, Simone. Yeah. You might mix. The, you might miss the Gay Olympics. Oh shit! Why? When's the Gay Olympics? It'll be the 14th is when we record it. Oh, like the practice one? Yeah, I will miss that one likely. Um. You're free to come on. if you want, because it it won't be like a. That's when I write my social written response diploma. It's only from nine to twelve though. Okay. But I might if need. Wanna, I, I might. I might need the day to study math after. If you wanna, if you just wanna come to have fun with us, like we're just gonna have fun and like play games. That's also fine. I might. It's, it's not like hour. Take an hour break from studying. It's good for you. That brain. is a good idea. It'll be a really good. It'll be a really like you can bring food and eat and like. Bro, my study breaks cannot involve any sort of knowledge whatsoever. I take a walk. At, like I, I go on a hot girl walk. Basically, I use my off-brand swap, beats swap. and I walk to the beat of um, stripper music. Hell I yeah. still think you should come for kind of like a, a break, but also like I can't stop you. But I do think because at least we're not doing like a hefty topic where we're like you know depression yeah it'll just be literally us like just avery and you screaming uh still floyd <laughs> gay olympics is trivia though that's why i'm a bit iffy on that because i don't want to get that mixed up in my brain not with this things. gay olympics what Since it will when are have, they different? it will it will have trivia but uh we're expanding you know we're adding in more fun stuff mm. trivia mm. gets boring we've done literally three gay olympics with just trivia i'm people are getting bored I'm I running out of trivia, Simone. How I many times? Olympics. How many times can I ask what w- what was the blank riots? You can ask it so many times. <laughs> just comes a chance of speed. You you just gotta find more questions. You just gotta find more. It'll yeah things. no the game Olympics just becomes like who can speed rock who can walk their normal speed the fastest. <laughs> Dude, I would lose. <laughs> who who owns more flannel? <laughs> Avery would win. Between me and Jess. Yeah. I own one flannel, and anyway. Avery purchased it for me. Anyway. Because well, I have a bunch of mine away. You have one of mine. Let's. Anyway. Let's. I think let's. I have like three of yours. Avery. What? What do you wanna do? You wanna begin your kind of transition into your story? Um. Gay goddess. That's it. Okay, go enjoy the story. That's it. <laughs> yeah. My story is called The Passion of S.S. Serge and Bacchus. Translated from Greek, uh, this is the story of two Christian saints who are believed to be lovers. Under the rule of the Emperor Maximian, gross superstition held sway over the human race, where people worshipped and made sacrifices to stones and wood, the devices of human beings, and they consumed obscene offerings. Those unwilling to sacrifice were subjected to torture and harsh punishment and compelled to serve the demons. A decree to this effect, with severe threats, was posted in the markets of every city. The purity of air was defiled with the, with the diabolical smell from the altars, and the darkness of idolatrous error was reckoned a matter of state. It was then that Serge and Bacchus, like stars shining joyously over the earth, radiating the light of confession of and faith in our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, began to grace the palace honored by the Emperor Maximian. The blessed Serge was the primissarius of the school of the Gentiles, a friend of the Emperor and who had great familiarity with him, so that Maximian promptly acceded to his request. Thus the blessed Serge, having a certain friend Antiochus, was able to arrange for him to become the governor of the province of Augusto Euphrates. The blessed Bacchus himself happened to be the secundarius of the school of Gentiles. Being as one in their love for Christ, they were also undivided from each other in the army of the world, united not by the way of nature, but in manners of faith, always seeing and saying, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. They were adept and excellent soldiers of Christ, cultivating assiduously the inspired writings to combat diabolical error and fighting vigorously in battle to defeat the enemy. But the malicious and evil spirit afflicted with envy some of those who had been brought to the school of the Gentiles, and they, seeing the saints so honorably received in the imperial chambers, so advanced in military rank, 
and on such familiar terms with the emperor, and being unable to bring any other instrument of malice against them, accused them to the emperor of being Christians. Waiting for the moment when the saints would not be standing near the emperor and finding him alone, they said to him, Such zeal for the cult of the holiest and greatest gods has your mortal majesty that in these holy receipts of yours, which are everywhere disseminated, you have commanded that all unwilling to honor and worship them, and in submission to your righteous doctrine, should perish, should perish in great torment. How is it then that Serge and Vacus, the directors of our school, enjoy such familiarity with your eternal power when they worship Christ, whom those Jews executed, crucifying him as a criminal, and by persuading many others to draw them away from the worship of the gods? When he heard this, the emperor refused to believe it and said, I do not think you speak the truth that Serge and Bacchus are not devoted to the veneration and worship of the gods, since I have such a pure affection for them, and they would hardly be worthy of it if they were not truly faithful in their piety towards the gods. But if, as you say, they belong to that unholy religion, they shall now be exposed. Once I have summoned them without their knowing of the charges that have been brought against them, I will go with them into the temple of mighty Zeus, and if they sacrifice and eat of the holy offerings, you yourselves shall bear the risk of the slander of which you are guilty. If they refuse to sacrifice, they shall incur the penalty appropriate for their impiety. For the gods would not have the shield bearers of my empire be impious and ungrateful. We, O emperor, replied the accusers, moved by zeal and affection for the gods, have brought before your undying majesty what we have heard regarding them. It is for your unfailing wisdom to discover their impiety. Straight away, the emperor sent for them. They entered with the customary retine of, god, of guards and imperial pomp. The emperor received them and went in their company to the temple of Zeus. Once he had entered, Maximina offered libations with the whole army, partook of the sacrificial offerings, and looked around. He did not see the blessed Serge and Bacchus. They had not gone into the temple because they thought it impious and unholy to see them offering and consuming unclean sacrifices. They stood outside and prayed as one mouth, saying, King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone possess immortality and inhabit unapproachable light, shed light on the eyes of their minds because they walk in the darkness of their unknowing. They have exchanged your glory and corruptible God for the likeness of corruptible men and birds and beasts and snakes and they worship the created rather than you, the creator. Turn them to knowledge of you, that they may know you, the one true God, and your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who for us and for our salvation suffered and rose from the dead, that he might free us from the bonds of the law and rescue us from the folly of vain idols. Preserve us, God, pure and spotless, in the path of your martyrs, walking in your commandments. While this prayer was yet in their mouths, the emperor sent some of the guards standing near them and commanded them to be brought into the temple. When they had entered, the emperor said to them, It appears that, counting on my great friendship and kindness, for which the gods have been your defenders and advocates, you have seen fit to disdain imperial law and to become deserters and enemies of the gods. But I will, I will not spare you if indeed those things spoken of you prove to be true. Go then to the altar of mighty Zeus, make sacrifice and consume, like everyone else, the mystical offerings. In reply, the noble soldiers of Christ, the martyrs Serge and Bacchus, answered, We, O Emperor, are obliged to render to you earthly service of this corporal body, but we have a true and eternal King in heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, who is the commander of our souls, our hope and our refuge of salvation. To him every day we offer a holy living sacrifice, our thoughtful worship. We do not sacrifice stones or we do not sacrifice to stones or wood, nor do we bow to them. Your gods have ears, but they do not hear the prayers of humans, just as they have noses, but do not spell the sacrifice brought them, have mouths but do not speak, hands but do not feel, feet but do not walk. They that make them, as the scripture says, are like unto them. So is every one that trusteth in them because thou art with us. The Emperor's countenance was transformed with anger. Immediately, he ordered their belts cut off, their tunics and all other military gob removed, gold torques taken from around their necks, and women's clothing placed on them. Thus, they were to be paraded through the middle of the city to the palace, bearing heavy chains around their necks. When they were led into the, shadow, into the middle of the marketplace, the saints sang and joined together. Yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil, Lord. And, the, and this apostolic saying, 
denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, and putting off the form of the old man, naked in faith we rejoice in you, Lord, because you have clothed us with the garment of salvation, and have covered us with the robe of righteousness. As brides, you have decked us with women's gowns and brought us together for you, through our confession. You, Lord, commanded us, saying, Ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. Rise, Lord, help us and rescue us for your name's sake. Strengthen our souls that we may not be separated from you, and the impious may not say, Where is their God? When they reached the palace, Maximian summoned them and said, Most wicked of all men, so much for the friendship I have have bestowed upon you, thinking you to have proper respect for the gods, and which you, confident of my openness and affection, have despised, brazenly offering me in return that which is against the law of obedience and subjection. But why should you blaspheme the gods as well, through whom the human race enjoys such abundant peace? Do you not realize that the Christ whom you worship was the son of a carpenter? born out of wedlock to an adulterous mother whom those called Jews executed by crucifixion because he had become the cause of dissensions and numerous troubles among them, leading them into the error of magic and claiming to be a god. The very great race of our gods were all born of legal marriage, of the high, of the most high Zeus, who is thought to be the most holy, giving birth through his marriage and union with the blessed Hera. I imagine that you will have also heard that the heroic and twelve greatest labors were worthy of a god who is of heavenly Hercules, Heracles technically, born of Zeus. The noble soldiers of Christ answered, Your majesty is mistaken. These are the myths that ring in the ears of the simpler men and and led them to destruction. He whom you say to have been born of adultery as the son of a carpenter, he is God, the God of the true God, with and through whom all was made. He established the heavens, he made the earth, the abyss, the great sea. He bounded with sand, he adorned the heavens with a multitude of stars. The sun he invented for the illumination of the day, and as a torch in the night he devised the moon. He divided the darkness from the light, he imposed measure on the day and limits on the night. In wisdom he brought forth all things from non-being to being. In these last days he was born upon the, and the earth for salvation of humankind, not from the desire of a man, nor the desire of the flesh, from the Holy Spirit and an ever virgin girl. And living among humans, he taught us to turn from the error of vain idols, to know him and his Father. He is true God of true God, and in accordance with an unknowable plan, he died for the salvation of the human race. But he plundered hell and rose on the third day in the power of his divinity, and he established incorruptibility and the resurrection of the dead to eternal life. Beside himself with rage on hearing these things, the emperor ordered that their accusers be enrolled in their positions in the army and said to them, I am sending you to Duke Antiochus, thrice cursed ones, the very man you were able to promote to such rank because of the friendship and familiarity you had with me, so that you will realize how great is the honor you have lost by speaking against the gods and how trivial a court you merit for the worst punishments. Since Since the greatness of the gods has apprehended and brought your blasphemy to the judgment seal for justice. Immediately he sent them to Duke Antiochus, ordering that their entire bodies be bound with heavy chains, and that they be sent thus to eastern parts through a succession of officials. He also wrote a letter along these lines. From Maximian, eternal emperor and triumphant ruler of all, greetings to Duke Antiochus. The wisdom of the greatest gods is unwilling that any man should be impious and hostile to their worship especially shield and spear bearers of our empire. Wherefore, I commend to your severity the vile Serd and Bacchus, convicted with opposite, opposite proof of belonging to the unholy sect of the Christians and plainly deserving of the worst punishment, who I, cons, whom I consider unworthy of the admiration of imperial justice. Persuaded by you to change their minds and sacrifice to the gods, then treat them with their own innate humanity. Free them from the prescribed torments and punishments, assure them of our forgiving kindness, and that they will receive back immediately their appropriate military rank and be better off now than they were before. But if they will not be persuaded and persist in their unholy religion, subject them to the severest penalties of the law and remove them and remove from them hope of long life with the penalty of the sword. Farewell. 
The same day, the officials took them out of the city as far as the 12th mark, and when evening overtook them, they stopped at an inn. About midnight, an angel of the Lord appeared and said to the saints, Take courage and fight against the devil and his evil spirits, as noble soldiers and athletes of Christ, and once you have thrown the enemy, put, un put him under your feet, so that when you appear before the, the King of glory, we, the host of the army of angels, may come to greet you, singing the hymn of victory, conferring on you the trophies of triumph and the crowns of perfect faith and unity. When morning came, they rose and took the road with great joy and alacrity. They were also some of their household servants with them, united with them in longing for the love of Christ and in true love for their corporal masters, on account of which they would not leave them when they were in such straits. They heard them discussing with each other the appearance of the angel in the night. Taking the road, the two chanted psalms together and prayed as if with one mouth. Thus, we have rejoiced in the way of martyrdom as much as in all riches. We will meditate in thy precepts and search out thy ways. We will delight ourselves in thy statutes. We will not forget thy world. Deal bountifully with thy servants that we may live and keep thy word. As the emperor had commanded, the soldiers of Christ were sent from city to city through a succession of changing officials with great security along the road of martyrdom laid down for them until they were brought to the eparchy of Augusto Euphrates, which was on the borders next to the people of the Saracens, to a certain fortress called Berbalisus, Berbalisus, sure, where Duke Antiochus had a seat. Appearing promptly before him around the ninth hour, their custodians handed over the emperor's letter and also the holy martyrs Serge and Bacchus. Antiochus rode from his dais and accepted the emperor's rescript in his purple general's cloak. When he had read it, he summoned privately the official in charge and told him, Take the prisoners and secure them in the military prison, seeing that apart from the usual constraints, they do not suffer anything and do not place their feet in full manacles of wood. Bring them to the bench of my justice tomorrow so that I can hear them at the prescribed time according to the law. The official took them and bound them as the duke had commanded him. When it was evening, they sang together and prayed, as with one mouth, speaking thus. Though Thou, Lord, breakest the heads of the dragons and the waters. Thou didst cleave the fountain and the flood. Thou hast set all the borders of the earth. Cast thine eye upon us, O Lord, for the enemy hath reproached us, and the foolish people have blasphemed the, thy holy name. Deliver not the souls of those confessing thee to men more savage than beasts. Forget not the congregation of thy poor forever. Have respect unto thy covenant, for the dark places of the earth are full of habitations of cruelty. Let us not be returned humbled ashamed, so that we, thy humble servants, may praise thy name. Forget not the voice of thine enemies, the pride of them that hate thee, ascendeth continually against us, thy servants, and in vain have the people hated us. But do thou, O Lord, rescue us and free us for thy name's sake. Then, while they slept for a while, an angel of the Lord appeared to them and said, Take heart, stand fast, and unmovable in your faith and love. It is God who aids and watches over you. Rising from their sleep and reporting to the household the apparition of the angel, they were encouraged and began to chant again. In my distress, I cried unto the Lord, and he heard me from his holy mountain. I laid me down and slept, for the Lord sustained me. We will not be afraid of thou sands of people that have set themselves against us round about. Arise, Lord, and save us, O our God, for salvation belongeth unto thy Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy people. The following day, when the Duke was seated on the bench of justice in the Praetorium, he summoned the commentarius and said, Bring in the prisoners. The latter responded, They are at hand before the righteous bench of your authority. When the saints appeared, he commanded the emperor's letter to be read. Once this was done, Duke Antiochus, prompted by his associate, announced, it is incumbent on you to obey the orders of the glorious empire, our Lord, and to sacrifice to the gods and worthy of their benevolence. Since you were unwilling to do this, you have forfeited great glory, and having made yourselves unworthy, were discharged from the military and deprived of all your former wealth. Nonetheless, if you will now obey me and sacrifice to the gods to earn their goodwill, you could earn even greater honor and glory than before and receive back your military rank and more besides. This was prescribed in the letter sent to me, as you yourselves have heard. Being humane, the most holy emperor has disposed that if you repent of those things that you have rashly done, and now sacrifice to the gods, you may yet enjoy his favor. Wherefore I, feeling compassion for you, and mindful of your friendship and kindness, 
especially yours, my lord, sir. For I myself have benefited from your generosity. Advise you that if you will not do this, you force me to obey our lord, the emperor, and see that that his orders concerning you are strictly observed. In reply, the saints declared, We have all left and followed Christ, so that, heedless of earthly and temporal honor, we may become rivals of the angels in heaven, and ignoring terrestrial and corruptible wealth, we may heap treasure in heaven. What profit would it be if we gained the whole world but lost our souls? Do not therefore so advise us, Antiochus. For your fork is tongued, and the poison of adders is under your lips. You will hardly be able to change our minds while God himself encourages us. Do therefore what you will. We will not sacrifice to wood nor worship stones. We serve Christ, the Son of God, the eternal ruler, before whom every knee should bow of things in heaven and things on earth and things under the earth, and whom every tongue should confess. Your gods are man-made idols. If they were divine, they themselves would command humans and would need not to be avenged through human design on those who decline to serve and worship them. The Duke rejoined, We do not avenge the gods. It is through their disposition that all the powers of our enemies have been subjected to us. But we call you to justice because of your accursed and holy and unholy superstition. To which the saints responded, It is you who are accursed and unholy, and all those persuaded by you to sacrifice to demons and worship insensate stones and wood. All of them will soon be cast eternally into flames, and you will, and you also will be punished with them. In a great rage, the duke commanded that the blessed surge be taken from the praetorium and returned to prison. The blessed Bacchus he ordered held for blocking. The henchmen went at this until they collapsed exhausted and near dead on the floor. When they could go on no longer, he directed that Bacchus be turned over onto his stomach to be beaten with four whips of rawhide, saying to him, Let's see if your Christ will free you from my hands. From that, from the first hour until evening, they wore away his flesh. Blood flowed everywhere, both his stomach and liver were ruptured. The blessed Bacchus sent a, said to Antiochus, The devil's servants, your tortures have failed, your impudence is overthrown. The tyrant Maximian is conquered, your father the devil has been put to shame. The more the man is ravaged by your blows, the more the man within is renewed in preparation for the eternal life to come. As he said this, there was a great voice from heaven. Come, rest henceforth in the kingdom prepared for you, my noble athlete and soldier, Bacchus. Those standing by hearing the voice were stupefied and struck dumb. He himself, having borne the blows so long, gave up his spirits to the angels. The duke, frustrated by his defeat, ordered that his remains not be buried, but thrown out and exposed as meat to the dogs, beasts, and birds outside the camp. Then he rose and left. When the body was tossed some distance from the camp, a crowd of animals gathered around it. Birds flying above would not allow the bloodthirsty beast to touch it and kept guard throughout the night. In the morning, some of the monks who lived, by, in the, who lived nearby in caves came and liked up the body of the animals. As if they were rational human beings had been mourning. Mourning. They buried him in one of their caves. Meanwhile, the blessed surge, deeply depressed and heartsick over the locks of Bacchus, wept and cried out, No longer, brother and fellow soldier, we will, will we chant together. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. You have unyoked from me and gone up to heaven, leaving me alone on earth, bereft without comfort. After he uttered these things, the same night the blessed Bacchus suddenly appeared to him with a face as radiant as an angel's, wearing an officer's uniform, and spoke to him. Why do you grieve and mourn? If I have been taken from you in body, I am still with you in the bond of union, chanting and reciting. I will run the way of thy commandments when thou hast enlarged my heart. Hurry then yourself through beautiful and perfect confession to pursue and obtain me when finishing the course. The crown of justice for me is with you. At daybreak when he rose, he related to those who were with him how he had seen the blessed Bacchus in the night and in what sort of garb. The next day, the duke planned to go out to the fortress of Barbalysis, to that of Soros, and commanded that the blessed surge follow. He enjoined him to sacrifice, but the latter, with noble judgment, refused his blandishments. When they reached the castle of Soros, Antiochus took his seat in the praetorium, summoned the blessed surge, and told him, 
The most sacrilegious Bacchus refused to sacrifice to the gods and chose to die violently. He got the death he deserved. But you, my lord Surge, why give yourself over to such misery by following that deceptive and impious cult? Mindful of your kindness to me, I am disposed to mercy, and it embarrasses me that you were the cause of my having obtained this authority, since you now stand in the dock as the accused and I on the bench as the prosecutor. To this Christ witness answered, Antiochus, this very suffering and present disgrace will stand as a patron for me of great eloquence and eternal glory with the King of heaven and of earth and of every living thing, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. If only you would now heed me and recognize my God and King Christ and be circumspect in regard to the heavenly ruler Christ as you are in dealing with earthly kings, you would provide yourself with power unending and perpetual glory. For earthly Earthly rulers pass quickly, as the psalm says, You shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. And again, I have seen the wicked highly exalted and lifted up like the cedars of Libanus. And I passed by, and lo, he was not, and I sought him, and his place was not found. The duke replied, Spare us this idiocy and ignorant foolishness. Sacrifice to the gods in obedience to the holy command of our, of our ruler, the emperor Maximian. If you will not know that you force me to forget all that has come to me through you and to subject to you the most rigorous punishment decreed by law. Sir, sir, do as you will. I have Christ to preserve me, who said, Fear not which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. The body is subject to you, torture and punish if you wish, but bear in mind that if you kill my body, you cannot dominate my soul, neither you nor your father, Satan. The duke replied angrily, it appears that my patience has served only to prod you along the path of willfulness. He summoned the official in charge and told him, fasten long nails in his boots, sticking straight up, and then put them on him. Once the boots were on, Antiochus sat in his carriage, directed that the animals be fiercely driven all the way to Tetrapygrim and ordered the Blessed One to run in front of him. Tetra Pyagrim is nine miles from Cyrum. While he ran, the Blessed One sang, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he, inclined in, and he inclined unto me. He brought me up also out of a horrible pagan pit, out of the miry clay of idolatry, and set my feet upon a rock, and establishes my goings. When they reach the capsule, the Duke says, It amazes me, Serge, that having first been kept in such confinement, you now sustain these bitter torments. The most holy ma martyr responded, These tortures are not bitter to me, but sweeter than honey. The duke got out of the chariot and went into breakfast, indicating that Serge should be retained in the soldier's custody. In the evening, Serge sang palm psalms. Those who did eat half of my bread hath lifted up their heels against me, and with the cords of hideous torture they have laid a net for my feet, hoping to trip me up. But rise, Lord, outrun them, and cause them to stumble, and rescue my soul from the wicked. About midnight, an angel of the Lord came to him and healed him, restoring his feet completely. In the morning, mounting the bench, the duke ordered him brought in, thinking he would be unable to walk and would have to be carried on account of his feet. When he saw him coming, walking a considerable little distance and not limping at all, he was astounded and exclaimed, The man is a sorcerer. This must be how he managed to enjoy such familiarity with the emperor he accomplished it through sorcery. What I am seeing is the proof of what they said about him. I would have thought it wholly impossible for him to walk on his feet after having been disabled by the torture inflicted on him yesterday. By the gods, I am confounded at seeing him now walk as if nothing had happened. When the blessed surge stood before the bench, Antiochus addressed him. Come to your senses even now, sacrifice to the gods, and you will avoid further torture. I will spare you out of respect for your kindness. You will not know that the witchcraft which which you devise to heal yourself will not avail you. To which the blessed surge replied, If only you could escape the intoxication of diabolical error. I am in my senses in the Lord who has trampled the weapons of your father the devil under his feet of his humble servant, and has given me victory over you and sent his angel to heal me. It is you who are the magician and those who worship demons. It is the cult of your nameless idols that invented every sorcery. That is the beginning and cause and conclusion of all evil. Antiochus sat down in his carriage even angrier and commanded Serge to run before him wearing the same boots as far as the castle of Rosafe, another nine miles from Tetra Prygrum. 
When they came to the castle of Rosafe, the duke said to the blessed Serge, Has the agony of the nails untied the knot of your idiocy? Are you prepared now to sacrifice to the gods, or will you persist in this insane obsession? The noblest martyr rejoined, Know this, Antiochus, with this foolishness I will dissolve and undo your malicious and wicked strength. Do what you will, I will not worship demons, nor sacrifice to idols. Blameless in this, I strive to offer sacrifice only to my lord. Seeing that he remained steadfast and immovable in his faith and confession of Christ, the duke pronounced sentence against him. You have rendered yourself unworthy of the favor of the gods and become a member of the unholy sect called Christians, injuring the great good of our ruler, the emperor Maximian, Maximian by refusing to comply with his holy decree and sacrifice to the gods. For this, the law requires that you suffer the penalty of the sword. A number of those present shouted out that the sentence issued against him was just. The cards came immediately and gagged his holy lips, took him out of the courtroom, and led him away to be executed. A great crowd of men, women, and children followed to see the Blessed One meet his end. Seeing the beauty blooming in his face and the grandeur and nobility of his youth, they wept bitterly over him and bemoaned him. The beasts of the region left their lairs and gathered together with the people, doing no injury to the humans, and bewailed with inarticulate sounds the passing of the holy martyr. When they reached the place where the holy martyr of Christ was to meet his end, he called on the guards to allow him a little time to pray. Extending his hands to heaven, he said, The beasts of the field and the birds of the sky, recognizing your dominion and rural Lord, have gathered together for the glory of your holy name, that you will incline and wish of your goodness to turn through their unreason the reason of humans to knowledge of you. For you wish all to be saved and to come to knowledge of the truth. When you lay death upon them, accept their repentance, Lord, and do not remember the sin of ignorance which they have perpetrated against us for your sake. Enlighten the eyes of their minds and lead them to the knowledge of you. Receive, Lord, my spirit and give it rest in the heavenly tents with all the others whom you have found acceptable. To you do I commend my soul, which you have rescued from the snares of the devil. Saying this and signing himself, he knelt and was beheaded, giving up his spirit to the angels. A voice from heaven said, Come also, Serge, victor and soldier, to the kingdom prepared for you. The hosts of angels, the ranks of patriarchs, the choirs of apostles and prophets, the souls of the just, all await your coming to share with them the wonderful things in store for you there. The place that received the holy martyr's blood became a great chasm. God arranged this so that those who wallow like pigs in the mire of paganism, terrified when they saw the abyss, would not dare to approach or trample in this spot the blood of the holy martyr. That was the reason this great chasm came into existence, and the spot has remained so up to the present day, bearing the signs of great antiquity at the command of God, to establish the, vir the miracle visually for unbeliever unbelievers, so that they may build on it a firm foundation of faith. Some of those who had come to witness the death of the holy martyr, seeing that they shared a common nature with him, gathered up his remains and buried them handsomely where the holy one had died. After a great while, some religious men from the Castle of Soros, prompted by zeal for the service of Christ, but pious in a somewhat practical way, tried to steal the body from the spot as if it were some precious treasure. The saint would not suffer his body, which had been dragged around, whipped, and triumphed so publicly in the faith of Christ, to be moved in secret. So he asked of God that a fire be set in the spot, not to seek revenge on those attempting the theft or to burn them but so that by lightening the gloom of night, he would reveal the robbery to those in the castle of Rosafe, which is just what happened. Once the fire was burning in the place where the saint lay, some of the soldiers living there saw the flames reaching to the sky and thought that the great blaze had been sent by some enemy. They came out armed and pursued those attempting to steal the saint's body. They prevailed on them to remain there a few days and to build stones and a clay a tomb where he lay. Once they had honorably covered the body of the saint, they went away. After a time when the religion of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ had begun to flourish, some very holy bishops, 15 in number, gathered together and constructed near the castle of Rosafe a shrine worthy of Serge's confession and removed his remains there, installing them in the shrine on the very day he was martyred, the 7th of October. Many miracles and cures were effected wherever his holy relics were, especially in the tomb where he had first lain. For it is a quality of the place of his death that the saint is able to prevail upon God to heal all those who come there with any sort of disease, and to cure those possessed of unclean spirits, and to render savage beasts completely tame. 
The animals, in fact, observe the day of his death every year as if it were a law, coming in from the surrounding desert and mingling with the humans without doing them any harm, nor do their savage impulses move them to any violence against the humans who come there. Rather, they come to the place in gentleness, out of reverence for the holy martyr, at the command of God, to whom he be glory, honor, and power, now and forever.